I'm in a culture and in a nation, it's extremely important that men rise up and confront the evil, not accommodate themselves to the evil. And unfortunately, we've watched most Americans enjoy accommodating themselves to the evil. Most pulpits enjoy accommodating themselves to the evil, and most magistrates enjoy accommodating themselves to the pulpits. We are here today to remember men who thought differently than that, acted differently than that, and did what was right. You are standing on hallowed ground. I hope you understand that. This is where the courthouse was. This is where the jail was. That is the church where they got the beam to break the door down to the jail to rescue Joshua Glover and set him free from tyranny. This is the ground you stand on here today. You might be wondering, why didn't the sheriff try to stop them? Because God and his providence had already took action to assure the sheriff wouldn't try to stop them. Just four days earlier, the Germans and the Irish had a riot with each other, had a melee, and were beating each other up here on the streets of Milwaukee, and the sheriff got injured badly. And so when a crowd of 5,000 showed up and 30 burly men with a beam came to the door and started smashing it down, he stepped aside. God and his providence had already paved the way so that Joshua Glover could be set free. Hallelujah, glory, hallelujah, amen. In 1842, there was an act of interposition by a state judge in regards to the slaves in Pennsylvania. And guess what? The Supreme Court in Prig versus Pennsylvania trashed his act of interposition. And you know what all the other magistrates did? They hid behind the courts and said, well, we're personally opposed to slavery, but the Supreme Court has ruled and we're just gonna listen to them. And when you read the writings, you see that they wrote and were glad about giving the Supreme Court a place that the Constitution never gave it, namely that of being final arbiter of what is or is not constitutional. They are not the final arbiter. Thomas Jefferson said the Constitution Establish no such tribunal. In a true federalism, all branches of government, all levels of government, take an oath to uphold the Constitution. And if any one branch violates it, it's incumbent upon all other branches at all levels to oppose the branch that's impugned it, even if that branch is the Supreme Court itself. Joseph Story used Prig versus Pennsylvania. He used the great evil of slavery in order to strengthen the arm of the Supreme Court. Read the case yourself. The Supreme Court spent the first 40 to 60 years of its existence accruing powers to itself that the Constitution never gave to it through their case law. And the magistrates have loved it because they can hide behind the skirt of the court. And the only reason they get away with it is because of us. As Anne said, it's up to us, it's the people. We must demand, we must let them know the gig is up. Yeah. Yeah. This is baloney. Don't tell us you have to obey, that's a lie. In a true federalism, your duty, sirs, is interposition. That's what your duty is. And unless we tell them that and destroy the idol that they have created of judicial supremacy that somehow the Supreme Court is the final arbiter and we're all supposed to stand by while helpless preborn babies are being butchered or while men are being enslaved is absolute garbage. It is totally contrary to Western civilization, our form of government, and our Christian faith. I was talking to one of our current Supreme Court justices about two months ago, and I brought up these justices who defied the U.S. Supreme Court and defied the entire federal government. You understand, our state Supreme Court and our state legislature both defied the Supreme Court and defied the entire federal government. You understand that. And I asked this sitting Supreme Court justice who is a conservative, I said to him, do you think Justice Abram Smith and the men of 1854 who sat on that bench and defied SCOTUS 
were right or wrong. And you know what he said to me? They were absolutely wrong. They should have obeyed. And I asked him, I said, let's say if Governor Walker was still in office and for some fantasy, he actually defied the Supreme Court and didn't allow two men and two women to get married in the state of Wisconsin. You told us earlier, pardon me, he said to me, I said to him, would you obey Governor Walker in our Constitution or would you obey SCOTUS? You know what he said to me? I would obey SCOTUS. That was after he had given his speech and said that he had three million plus bosses in the state of Wisconsin calling for all of us. I looked at him and I said, yeah, okay, so you don't have three million bosses. You have one boss, that beast whore that sits over by the Potomac. And we were standing in a bar and there were people all around us listening to this 45 minute conversation. Let me tell you what kind of man Justice Abram was very briefly. Here's what he said when he defied and when they interposed against SCOTUS. He said, but believing as I do that every state officer is required to take an oath to support the Constitution of the United States, as well as his own state, was designedly placed by the federal Constitution itself as a sentinel to guard the op outposts, as well as the citadel of the great principles and rights, which was intended to declare, secure, and perpetuate, I cannot shrink from the discharge of the duty now devolved upon me. And here, this Supreme Court justice in our day says that man was wrong. Justice Smith went on to say, I know well its consequences, the consequences of his interposition, that he would be attacked, and appreciate fully the criticism to which I may be subjected by the citizenry, some of them. But I believe most sincerely and solemnly that the last hope of free, representative, and responsible government rests upon the state sovereignties and fidelity of state officers to their double allegiance to the state and federal government and so believing I cannot hesitate in performing a clear and indispensable duty. And he wrote the opinion that defied the entire federal government here in the state of Wisconsin. Amen. These are the type of men who were involved and it all started with this rescue of Joshua Glover. May we see the same thing happen on behalf of the preborn in our day by our magistrates. God bless you.